Hey, and welcome back to Testa's Tuesday Tip. We have the UCSB art class coming out here today. The animal anatomy class they sketch um, or draw animals, I guess. So they come out here and draw our animals. <laughs> so me and Matt are going to do this zebra for a little demonstration for the class. Jeff is here. Come here, Jeff. Where are you? Right over here, Chuck. I'll bring the camera. That's right. So Jeff's here. Filling in for Sycamore. What's up, Sycamore? <laughs> going to edit it. Jeff's going to be working on rocks over there on our stone sheet while well, we have all this chaos and then uh, hopefully he'll film some Yeah, we'll get a couple of good artists. shots in, yeah. couple people. This is Matt. He's from another taxidermy studio up in Gilton. And he's here today helping me on what we're getting. Well, we're going to mount this zebra today. And uh, we're going to explain a little bit about it. And that Jeff, somewhere over there is Jeff. Um, he has several nicknames. <laughs> if you need them, you can call him Chumley, Dingo Dave, Dumbass. <laughs> um, what's your other couple of names? Goldfish. Goldfish. But he has like a, a one, yeah. He has a, like a one-second attention span. <laughs> Anyhow, every show needs a chumley. That's why I call him chumley. Um, basically, you're here today to sketch these animals. We're going to explain a little bit of how it works. So this is called a mannequin. They're made out of styrofoam, but they're actually sculpted like a piece of art. If you look behind you there, you'll see a something in green clay behind Chumley. You'll see a big ugly looking mold thing and you'll see a, a skull that has green clay on it and foam and a yellow mannequin below it. So basically that mannequin on the bottom, that little pig, was I sculpted it from a skeleton and foam um, and green regular modeling clay like you use in art class and made the model and then from that we make a mold and then that gets us our mannequin. Okay so we start off with this man mannequin and then we use a glass eye. Um, and I'll pass one around just in case you're curious. And if you look, they're pretty dark, but if you look in there you'll see that there's veins and um, iris and everything in there. And in our ears we use what's called an ear liner, which is uh, made out of a hard uh, cloth material. It's flexible. We make our own glue. This is a hundred year old glue recipe made out of dextrin and flour and pine salt for a molding agent. So uh, I like to do things old school as we can. So see what, what you have in your hand there is uh, what we put in the ear to get the shape. Then we'll make our muscles back with clay. Same thing with <coughs> our eyes in the clay. And uh, what we do too, a little trick, this might help you in your art, I'm not sure, but um, if you're drawing something, we'll take on a computer and we pull a profile for the zebra, place it on your acetate, and then you can step back and align your profile against, and you can check it against the live animal. That's just a little trick we do. Hey Chuck, you got it. You hungry? It sounds like your stomach's growling. That's my dog. <laughs> oh my. my mascot. <laughs> yep. Okay, so basically. We have to detail our mannequin. We, we cut out and shape our nostrils. There's a slot we cut in the lips where we tuck the lips, tuck the nose in and all that. So we're, what we're going to do while you guys are drawing, we're going to get ready. We're going to put glue all over this. 
we're going to slide the skin on and then uh, start roughing in the face and sewing it up. So pretty fast like five minute rundown of how I do my job but is there any questions or anything? How'd you get started doing taxidermy? Um, oh, that. Okay. How did I get started? I don't know how he got started. I got started, I saw an uh, ad in the back of Outdoor Life because I love pheasants. My favorite bird I used to hunt them and I always was fascinated with taxidermy and it said, mount your own pheasant, 995, get professional results. So I ordered a do-it-yourself kit and actually did my first one on my living room table. So all it takes to learn taxidermy is 10 bucks and 30 years <laughs> of practice. <laughs> but that's how I got started. But I've been fascinated by animals my whole life. The, um, the taxidermy part, since I was a kid, I would just, I don't know why, I'd just go, wow, look at this. And when I was a kid, when you went to studios, they used to have elephants and gorillas and all of that, because it's not like now, where, where uh, well, now they're starting to have elephants again, but yeah. they'll never be gorillas or chimps, thank God. But um, um, there, there's all kinds of, you know, there's a big taxidermist on Sunset Boulevard in uh, in Hollywood that my mom would have to walk me by going to her work at the credit union, their musicians union, and she couldn't get me past the, the window. So I don't know, you know. I wish I could have been fascinated with something that could make me a million dollars or something. <laughs> nope. Yeah. You know, so. Didn't you make a million dollars from all your internet thing? Yeah. <laughs> that's, why, <laughs> that's why I'm working here. What Cause happens cause when you become internet famous? You get famous. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> and then people just bother you all the time. All the time. Yeah. My phone rang. Uh, thanks for helping me here. Yeah. No, that's okay. I forget to talk about that sometimes. Um, Two years, two years, I think my phone rang 24 hours a day. It was crazy. You couldn't even, you couldn't even check a machine because you'd go to, you know, it just got, I just gave up, you know. And now, oh, now what happens is I just got hacked again. We just got my website back up. I get hacked like all the time and I get my bank account hacked all the time and some poor sap in Louisiana stole my credit because he thought because I was famous I must have money. <laughs> he was really disappointed. 